Yeah, hi, small business owners. It's Harpreet from Sharon Law Firm. So today I want to talk about, I think, an important topic in the business communities uh, nowadays. And always, I think, uh, so that's about the employment. And also I want to shift the gears uh, and want to bring more uh, videos about employment law because that's, I think, one of the uh, important topic and most litigated issues are in employment law for like any business owner because we are living in a uh, state which have uh, strongest employment laws, I think, compared to the other states in the country. So uh, talking about employment law, I think it's, uh, uh, it's one of the important things. And I have, I think, uh, during last six months, I have received many questions, but uh, I was covering, I think, also the important topics about real estate transactions and those kind of issues. So I think let's shift the gear to employment laws and uh, because there, there have been significant development in terms of uh, employment law and always I think either through different legislation, there is always I think changes in employment law and it's one of the uh, I think hot topic about any kind of issues related to your business because human resources um, uh, it's, I think, your backbone of your business, uh, especially uh, are you in, I think, a restaurant industry, are you in trucking industry, or like any kind of industry, because for a growing business, human resource is one of the most important capital you can have. So uh, talking about laws related to human resource, employment, so those are, I think, uh, uh, this would be my priority this year. So I think today I want to talk about and just start the employment law, uh, I think, journey with you to talk about the most talked about, I think, issue. It's the AB5 law. Uh, people have heard about AB5 uh, and, and some people have some impression that AB5, like everybody is employee now uh, and like um, independent contractor status is gone. Uh, so I just want to, I think, touch based on those issues which people have some misconception about or they are right at, at I think, some point about these laws. So, so what is AB5? First, before I think even to talk about AB5, I want to talk about, uh, you have heard, okay, who is an employee basically? So employee is any person who you hires to do some kind of activity on your behalf. It's basically kind of an agency relationship uh, where you are asking a person to do certain act on your behalf and, and you are asserting some control on that person to achieve that goal. So basically employment can be anything means uh, it's, it's so broad <laughs> because of that we have, I think AB5 laws uh, to just provide some direction to uh, to discuss, I think either with a person who you, you are hiring, that what would be the status of that person? Either that person is employee or an independent contractor. And let me tell you what's an independent contractor. Basically, I think in layman's language, independent contractor is just owning your own business, just, I think, uh, just working on your own. Uh, it's either your plumber, your handyman, uh, either your HVAC, I think, a technician, or, or, or any person or any business you hire to provide services. So, uh, so I think the main thing you would be thinking about, so, uh, so what's the difference between an employee and, and, and like what, uh, why we are making big fuss about it. Uh, employee also get money, independent contractor also get money, but you have to think about, if you are an employee, there is a whole lot of stuff and a whole lot of protection which you get compared to being an independent contractor, which is basically like owning your own business and just uh, providing services to other business or other people. So with being an employee, obviously you get protections about minimum wage, overtime, payments, your meal and rest breaks and also a whole lot of protection about discriminations uh, or, or there is laws about, uh, I think, how you can get remedies through labor commissioner's office. If you have issues with, I think, 
anything related to employment law protection, how you can use that avenue which have state provided you uh, to enforce those rights. Because obviously labor commissioner's office, it takes more time, but I think the state is working <laughs> with you to enforce those rights uh, with labor commissioner's office. There can be other civil penalties which you will be able to get. Or a PAGA claim, which is basically a private attorney general's act, which also provides you uh, the right to, to enforce on behalf of other employees if, if th those employees have similar issues which you are going through with that employer. So there is a whole lot of, I think, protection which you get, which you will not get if you are an independent contractor. If suppose uh, the person or the, uh, or the uh, service recipient who received service have, have not paid you, so what's your remedy in if you are an independent contractor. Your remedy is only your contract or the service which you provide, then you have to go to the court. You cannot go to labor commissioner's office and ask for enforcement or payment from uh, the uh, service recipient. So, so you only have, I think you are left <laughs> on your own to, uh, to, 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 I think, enforce your own rights, which are basically your contractual right or, or at max you can get uh, equitable remedies from court, either it's from quantum merit principle. So, so it's a big difference uh, because your employment status makes a big difference, either you are employee or an independent contractor. So, so previously, before this law AB5, what was going on? Before AB5, even I like to go before 2018. So basically before 2018, if you have dispute about if you are an independent contractor or an employee, so, so what usually the courts uh, were doing? The court have another ruling, which was a Supreme Court ruling. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled in 1989, uh, which provided a Baroli test, which is basically like an 11, 12 or 13 factor because People over the time have divided it to a uh, couple of more factors. So, so, so there were these factors on the basis of which the court were deciding if you are an employee or a dependent contractor. Because in some of the, I think, jobs, uh, I think it's, it's hard to say if you are an employee independent contractor. Like you're working from, uh, I think, 10 hours a day, um, but you're, I think the employer have designated you as independent contractor, giving you 1099. But you think that you should be an employee based on, um, and, and I think I will, I will come to those tests in next videos because those tests will take their own video because you have to discuss about different factors and it would not be possible to discuss all these things in one video. So. So you were thinking, I think, uh, what about I'm just getting like $20,000 or $18,000 uh, uh, after spending so much time and, and, and you, you would be getting a 1099 and you're thinking, what about my protection? What about minimum wage? And your employer is saying, no, we, I have hired you as an independent contractor so, uh, and you have agreed based on this agreement. And so, uh, so I'm not obligated to give you any kind of, I think, meal and rest breaks or any kind of minimum wage protection. Uh, so in that situation, obviously you would think about and possibly you will just file a claim with the court that, or with the labor commissioner office that you are an independent, uh, not an independent contractor, but you're an employee. But what are the tests which is used by uh, before 2018 uh, by the courts? It was called a Borelli test, which just came from this ruling uh, in 1989, which provided this uh, test where courts were using. So the factors in that test were not, uh, any single factor was not determinative. So, uh, so it's, it was basically a kind of factual analysis the court were doing based on your own facts and then coming to a conclusion. So it was kind of, I think, a, uh, 11 to 12 point 
which you were discussing and just going through all your facts and just trying to make it, making some reasonable i think analysis and just trying to come to some conclusion so but let's move forward to uh, 2018 so what happened in 2018 there comes a, a ruling from california supreme court which is called dynamics ruling um, which is about a delivery company that delivery company just previously used to designate their employees as as employees and later they uh, de start designating them as independent contractor and those employees later filed suit so in 2018 supreme court provided the ruling after just going through these phases of uh, superior court uh, appellate court and then to the supreme court so the supreme court has basically uh, decided that that we should provide i think a very simplistic test which would only have like three factors to determine like if you are an independent contractor or an employee so so supreme court provided this simplistic test but the main difference was that rather than being simplistic it was more burdensome for the employer because it assumed that you are an employee and the employer has the responsibility to prove that 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 the employee is not come within any kind of factor which is provided by the supreme court which were these three factor tests which is uh, famously called as abc test abc doesn't uh, like stand for like it's not an acronym it's just like three factors and any factor is a determinative factor that was the main difference because in borelli test you have these like 11 12 points out of which you just try to make some sense and come to a reasonable conclusion but like if if an employee have met like one of the factor but that was not the determinative uh, or it, it was not conclusionary to determine that you are employee or independent contractor so it has more put more burden the uh, dynamics ruling the 2018 supreme court ruling have put more burden on the employers and it has basically i think created um, i think employee status for like almost <laughs> all the independent contractor uh, which are in this gray area so so especially the industries like taxi trucking industry or uh, uh, mostly i think the sales profession if you are in medical profession uh, you are doing medical sales or or even the real estate professionals like your realtors so those were the people who based on this ruling it's because it's it's a very broad ruling and i will talk about the specific factors in the next video so it has basically i think created a concern in like a whole lot of i think all the industries that like every person is now an employee and they supposed to get all these overtime uh, uh, i think protections meal and rest breaks so so then uh, obviously the business community has um, i think asked for the protection specific communities like either your licensed professional physician dentist uh, realtors and there is i think whole lot of industries and i will cover also the exception in the ab5 ruling what are the exception but basically you have to understand ab5 is basically a law which Pro which decide which test will apply to determine in your situation if you are an employee or independent contractor so so it provides a way either if you belongs to certain industries then baroli test will apply if you doesn't belongs to those industries then then broadly an abc test will apply which is a very broad test and basically under that test you would be an independent contractor uh, sorry an, an employee but now as ab5 it have uh, it just came uh, it has just been become a law in late 2019 and it become effective in january 1st 2020 so like different kind of industries are trying to i think uh, have litigation about this law in courts and i think their main argument is about that this law is not constitutional or the federal law preempts it 
And I think the classic example is uh, recently, we have seen the trucking industry was able to carve out some exception. Uh, and I think in federal district court, the cases are still going on and they were able to get a preliminary injunction on application of AB5 specific to their industry based on the argument that uh, there, is, uh, there is a federal law which provide a preemption uh, on the state law because as you know, federal law is always supreme and any state law uh, should not, I think, interfere in, in any kind of federal law. So, so based on that presumption, uh, preemption principle, the, uh, the uh, different industries are trying to see if they can get an exemption or if they don't even have to follow the law. And I think it will take many years to just figure out which industry is kept out or not. But what we have at present, it's, it's this, um, I think, AB5, which would decide based on your industry if you should, I think, determine uh, the employment status based on Baroli test or based on ABC test. So, so, so this was, I think, a general video want to provide you what's this ABC law, a, sorry, the AB5 law is all about. So in the next videos, I will talk about the ABC test because either if you are in one industry or another, you have to see the ABC test. If you are in some industries which are exempt, then uh, you have to look at the Baroli test and I will cover the Baroli test in the uh, separate video. And then also I like to cover the exemptions like what are the industries which have got exemption under uh, that they don't have to look to ABC test to, to determine if they are employee or independent contractors. So there's a whole lot of stuff I think to talk about uh, employment law and I am excited to discuss those issues because those are the issues I think uh, many industry goes through because it's one of the important litigated issue which uh, any business owner uh, maybe have went through or in future because of the uh, stringent laws we have in California. So, uh, so see you in journey of, I think, talking about employment laws. And, and I think thanks again for watching these videos and because it encouraged me to bring you more, I think, general legal information. Uh, and in future, I think I will just continue to bring that and possibly it would be helping you out or at least it's, I think, providing you some, some training. Uh, whenever you go to legal professional, you are, I think consultation, it's, it's more fruitful and more productive instead of you're just uh, discussing these basic terms with your legal professional and just putting more time and energy on that. So again, thanks for watching this video. See you in the next video. Thank you.